In this video, I'm gonna be going over how to use the Amazon product research software known as Keepa. The reason I like using Keepa is because it keeps me in business. Sorry for the pun, but there is a reason that almost every seller out there uses Keepa, including wholesale sellers, arbitrage sellers, dropship sellers, and everything in between. The reason Keepa is so valuable as a software is because it shows you the history for almost every listing on Amazon. And as the saying goes, history is bound to repeat itself, which is why you smash the thumbs up button on every one of my videos. You no longer need a crystal ball when selling on Amazon to know if a listing will sell well in the future, because Keepa shows you the history for a listing, which allows you to go ahead and see the price history, the sales rank history, the seller history, and every other data point to know whether or not this listing is going to sell. But more importantly, if you are going to actually be able to get some of those sales. So sit back, buckle up, and let's begin. Keepa has three main interfaces. The first is going to be the web portion, which is this. The second is going to be the Chrome extension, which appears under every single listing and gives you the data for that listing. And then the third is that they also have a mobile app. I personally do not use the mobile app at all. However, if you are an arbitrage seller or you're thrifting through stores, that app can be very helpful. The main thing that I use as a dropship seller and a wholesale seller is the Chrome extension. Now there is a free version in order to get the paid version, which has a lot more data, it's going to cost you roughly around $15 a month. And I highly, highly recommend it. I have pulled up here three listings and I want to show you why Keepa is such a good tool. So when you download the Chrome extension, you can get it in the Chrome store. And once you install it, you're going to scroll underneath a listing and it could be any listing on Amazon. It's going to show you all of the data. So here I have pulled up a listing. And as you can see, we have three main graphs. The first right here is with this orange. The second is with this green. And then the third right here has several different lines running across it. So let's talk about the first box first. So in the first box, you have the price and then underneath you have the date. Here you can go ahead and you can see information about who is controlling the buy box and also what is the new price for that listing, as well as you can also go ahead and you can take a look at new third party FBM sellers. You can also go ahead and take a look at new third party FBA sellers. So this is going to show you the price history for a listing and it's one of the most useful parts about this tool. Underneath, you'll see that I can switch all of the days from day, week, month, year, and I can also extend the timeline to the history of the listing, which is 1,255 days. So if I go ahead and I extend it a year, I can see that the price is primarily very consistent. You'll see that Amazon is on this listing and they are almost always in the buy box. So you can see right here, it says Amazon at 110.66. And then it says the buy box price right here, which is 110.66 and it says buy Amazon. So Amazon is primarily always in the buy box. And then if I keep scrolling back, they are again, always in the buy box for the past year. Based on this data, I don't see any point on this graph where a third party seller was getting the buy box. It's always Amazon and Amazon is always getting the buy box. They are always in stock. So this would lead me to believe that this is a listing that I would not want to sell. So there are a lot of nuances here about whether or not you want to sell a listing or whether you don't. However, this is just based off of the information that I'm seeing here right now. Taking a look underneath, we can go ahead and we can see the sales rank. The sales rank is what is the rank for the item on Amazon. So the closer it is to one, the better it sells. So if an item is number one in its category, that means it's the best seller. And taking a look at here, I can see that this item really does vary from time to time. And you can go ahead and see that over the year it's bumping up and down. So if we switch it to three months, we can see that it goes all the way from 900,000. And then once it goes down, it goes all the way down to 300,000. So based off of this data, I could say that this is probably roughly selling maybe like 10 to 15 times a month. And the general rationalization is, is that every time that the graph goes down, that is a sale. Now it's not one to one. However, it's just a good rule of thumb. Another thing that you can do is you can go ahead and you can open up the rank right here on the top graph. So it'll show you if the price is in any correlation with the sales rank. So if the price goes down, does that mean that the sales rank is going down? If the price is raising, does that mean that the sales rank is going up? IE, if the price is going up, does that mean it's not selling as well? So there are a lot of nuances and a lot of information that you can gather from just these two graphs. The third graph that I want to take a look at is right here. It's called more historical data. Now what this shows you is it shows you the rating history for a listing. It shows you the offer history for a listing as well as it also shows you the review count. So as you can see right here, I can see the review count was 67. I can see the rating was 4.7. Then I can also see the new offer count was five, which means that at this time right here, there are five offers 
So on the third graph, it shows me the review count, the rating, and the offer. Now, the main thing that I focus on is I focus on the rating history just to see if it's stable, as well as I also like to see the new offer count, make sure that it's not having too many sellers or that it doesn't have too few sellers. As a wholesale seller, if I only see one seller on this listing for the entire history of it, that probably means that I would not be able to sell it. And if I try to sell it, I might get an IP complaint. So those are the graphs and there is a lot more information that we can talk about there. However, I want to go ahead and I want to move on to right here where you can go ahead and you can get a quick snippet of all the details in a very, very digestible format. So here you have the sales rank and here, if you don't want to go ahead and scroll around the graph, you can take a look at the current information. So the current is 739,000 in the 90 day average was 598,000. The 365 day average was 570,000. So what that means is that the average for the past year was 570,000 and then the current is 739. That means that it's averaging up, which probably means that it's getting less sales. So the, again, there are a lot of nuances and a lot of things you want to pay attention to here. The other thing is that if you hover over statistic, it's going to give you all the information for Amazon, the new offer used, as well as it's also going to go ahead and give you the sales rank. So that is pretty much all the information over here. Now on the side of the graph, you can go ahead and you can open up different things if you want to see them on your graph. So I can close the sales rank and then you see it's gone. I can open up the list price and then that'll show up. So again, you as the person viewing this graph can go ahead and control it to your liking. Several other features that you can do is you can go ahead and you can find the product on eBay. You can mess with your settings as well as you can also track a product if you want to go ahead and just track a specific listing. The other thing that I want to focus on for this tutorial, however, is going to be in data. This is where I find the best use for Keepa. Now, if what I already showed you didn't impress you right here is going to be one of the best tools that you will ever see. So here it's going to go ahead and show you all the information. You'll see that you have the ASINs, the brand name, manufacturer, all of this information we basically already saw. What I want to take a look at is I want to take a look at offers and buy box statistics. So if we want to know if we can sell a listing, we want to know who is the one who is in the buy box, which offer is the one that customers are seeing. So offers is going to show you all the offers on a listing, as well as it's also going to tell you who is prime, who is not, and you can see the price history for that seller. So I can go ahead and I can have that right here and it's going to show me all of that information. I can see all of the current sellers and I can go ahead and say, do I only want prime? Do I want free shipping? And I can export this information. So there's a lot that you can do with it. You can also mess with the time range. The other thing that I like to do is I like to go ahead and take a look at the buy box statistics. Now what the buy box is going to show me is which seller is in the buy box. So in the past 30 days, Amazon has been here 100% of the time. If I go back to 90 days, I can see that one seller won it for less than 1% of the time if the past 180 days. So case being is that Amazon is always in the buy box. So it would be very hard to compete with them. So let's go to a different listing and let's go ahead and take a look at this. So now that we know the basics for Keepa, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to brush through this. I just want to go ahead and see the history. So if I take a look at the price history, I see it's 79. So you can see that Amazon is not on this listing. There's no orange. I can see that the sales rank history is again up and down, up and down. So this is actually number 13,000, number 16,000. So this is probably doing a few hundred sales per month. It's a very, very good listing. Going back to the offer count, however, you can see that the new offer count is only one. And that goes back to what we were talking about previously, where I like to see there's some variation. Usually I like to see that there's like three or four sellers. I usually don't like to see too many. If there's like 50 sellers, it can be pretty hard to compete with them. However, if there's only one seller and that includes for the past history of the listing, it seems at most there were two sellers. It's going to be very hard to go ahead and compete on this listing because if I try to, the brand owner might not like that. So let's take a look at a good listing or particularly a listing that actually looks better where we see all the data matches up to what we want to see. So as you can see straight off from the sales graph, this doesn't look like a good seller. It's at about 1 million and then it maybe gets like 10 sales a month. So it's not the best selling listing. However, when you're drop shipping, you're not looking for a listing that's selling a million times a month because if you just go ahead and you list on it, you are not paying for the inventory until it sells. So as an FBA listing, this would probably not be great. However, as a drop shipping listing, this would be something that I would go ahead and list. Taking a look at the price history, I do not see Amazon on this at all. I can see that the history for the price is relatively consistent. In the past three months, it's been $69. And then if I go back to a year, 
I can see that it's actually up on average. It used to be 48, then it jumped to 63. 66 and now it's still actually selling at the higher price which is a good sign going to the third and final graph we see that the new offer count is on nine uh seven so it's been relatively hovering around seven eight somewhere around there and if we go ahead and we take a look at the data for that let's see how many sellers are in the buy box and if they're sharing or if they're rotating the buy box meaning that a different seller is being displayed to the customer in this area and different sellers are getting all of those sales. So if we go back to the buy box and we see in the past 30 days, one seller has had it 74%, another seller has had it 24%. Going back to 90 days, we can see that it is being shared. However, it's mostly between two sellers. So this is primarily what I look for with Keepa, and this is primarily all of the information that is going to help me determine whether or not this would be a good listing to sell. The last thing I want to show you is that when I use Keepa, I can also use it to go ahead and I can use it to look at my competitors. So the way that I do that is when I go ahead and I click on this, that is going to open up the Amazon storefront for that competitor. Now, normally, if you wanted to take a look at all a seller's listings, you would have to do this and then it would show you all of those listings. And then you would have to click through, as you can see, 150 pages, which can be very tedious. So with Keepa, you can actually go ahead and you can click the seller's name. And with the seller's name, it's going to go ahead and it's going to pull up all the information for that seller. So it'll show you their seller metrics. You can see their review rating over time, their listing count, their review count. So this seller has 151,000 uh, reviews. So this is actually a massive seller. You can see their highest categories as well as you can see their highest selling brands. So what I would do is I would take a look at their brands. I would see if I can search any of those brands up on Google, potentially get a wholesale account with them, as well as I can also go ahead and take a look at their storefront and I can take a look at their best selling listings. I can perhaps go ahead and try and sell those listings. The other great thing about Keepa is that you can export almost all of the data. It gives you almost every data point from the sales rank, from whether Amazon's on it the past 30, 90, 180 days, and basically every other data point that you would want. So through here, you can go ahead and you can sort it to all of the columns that you want. You can drag and drop different columns if you wanted to see the buy box seller. So there are a lot of uses and it really depends whether or not you're doing online arbitrage, wholesale, drop shipping. I'm going to have a more in-depth tutorial for wholesale and drop shipping when I do specific videos for those business models. However, this is just an overview for Keepa in general. On the web app, you also have a lot of other things that you can do. So you can do a product viewer. If you have a specific UPC code you wanna search up, you can enter it right here. If you have a specific brand or a specific type of product you wanna look up, you can do it in the product finder. Here you can go ahead and manipulate a lot. You can also take a look through the category tree. You can see the top sellers on Amazon. So again, a lot of data. Now, I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. There was a lot of information, so I definitely recommend watching it again, seeing all of the cool things that Keepa can do for you. There's a lot of use cases and it really depends on the business that you are operating in. So I hope that you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to go ahead and smash the thumbs up button. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.